Welcome. Today, we'll be going through question four from the Pan-African Maths Olympiad 2021. Find all integers m and n such that m squared plus n divided by n squared minus m and n squared plus m divided by m squared minus n are both integers. Please pause the video here and have a think about the problem on your own before proceeding to the hints and solutions. Hint number one. Note that the absolute value of the numerator must be greater than the absolute value of the denominator since the denominator is a factor of the numerator. Hint number two. Consider the factorization of m squared minus n squared. This may simplify some inequalities. Hint number three. Split the problem into cases. Consider special cases separately and consider whether the numerator or denominator is positive or negative or equal to zero. Solution. We will begin by going through two cases to make the main case simpler. We will look at m equal to n and m equal to minus n. First, we will look at m equal to minus n. Then the two fractions simplify to n squared plus n divided by n squared plus n and n squared minus n divided by n squared minus n, which are both equal to one and so both integers for all n apart from zero. So all values for m and n of the form m minus m work except m equal to zero. We will now go on to the second case, m equal to n, but we straight away see that m cannot be zero as then the denominator will equal zero and we can't divide by zero. So m squared plus n divided by n squared minus m becomes m squared plus m divided by m squared minus m, which is equal to m plus one divided by m minus one. And we see that m plus one and m minus one cannot both be negative because then the absolute value of the denominator will be greater than the absolute value of the numerator, which cannot be true since the denominator is a factor of the numerator. And so m plus one is greater or equal to zero. We also notice that m minus one cannot exceed two, as then m plus one and m minus one will be too close in value for the fraction to be an integer. And so m plus one, m minus one could be zero minus two, one minus one, not two and zero, because then the denominator will be zero, three, one, and four and two. And so m and n are minus one, minus one, not zero and zero because we can't divide by zero, two and two, and three and three. We'll now move on to the main case. And we notice that m squared plus n divided by n squared minus m is the same as n squared plus n divided by n squared minus n, except that the m and n are switched over in the second fraction. Hence, we may assume without loss of generality that m is greater than n and we can flip our solutions if n is greater than m and we've already looked at the case m equal to n so we don't need to worry about that. We can also notice that since m and n are integers we can rewrite m greater than n as m greater or equal to 1 plus n and we also notice that m squared is greater or equal to n for integer m. We will mostly be considering the second fraction and we first notice that the denominator of that fraction, m squared minus n, is greater or equal to m minus n since m squared is greater or equal to m and we know that m is greater than n and so m squared minus n is positive. We will now split the main case into three subcases when n squared plus n is negative equal to zero and positive. So first we will look at when the numerator of that fraction is negative. 
Now, because the absolute value of a denominator is less than the absolute value of the numerator, and the denominator is positive, and the absolute value of the numerator is minus n squared minus m, since the numerator is negative, we get m squared minus n is less than or equal to minus n squared minus m. Now, we can rewrite this to get m squared plus n squared plus m minus n less than or equal to zero. But m squared and n squared are both non-negative, since they're squares, and we know that m minus n is positive, since m is greater than n. So this cannot hold, since the left-hand side is positive. And so there are no solutions in this case. We will now move on to when n squared plus m is equal to zero. This means that m is equal to minus n squared. But if we look at the first fraction, we get n to the power of 4 plus n divided by n squared minus n squared. But this simplifies to n to the power of 4 plus n divided by 0. But we know we cannot divide by 0. And so there are no solutions in this case either. We will now move on to when n squared plus m is positive so greater than zero. So now we know that the numerator and the denominator of the second fraction are both positive. And so because the absolute value of the denominator is less than the absolute value of the numerator, we get m squared minus n is less than or equal to n squared plus m, which we can rewrite to get m squared minus n squared less than or equal to m plus n. Now, we've already looked at the case when m is equal to minus m, so we do not have to worry about dividing by zero. So we can divide both sides by m plus n to get m minus n less than or equal to one, or m is less than or equal to one plus n. But we also know that m plus one is less than or equal to m, and m is less than or equal to one plus n. So m must be equal to m plus 1. We will substitute this into both fractions and see how we can proceed from here. So what we get after substituting is that n squared plus 3n plus 1 divided by n squared minus n minus 1 must be an integer. So n squared minus n minus 1 divides n squared plus 3n plus 1. This also means that n squared minus n minus 1 divides n squared plus 3n plus 1 minus n squared minus n minus 1. After simplifying, we get that n squared minus n minus 1 divides 4n plus 2. Again, we will split the problem down into two smaller cases, when 4n plus 2 is positive and when 4n plus 2 is 0 or negative. Wait, first we'll look at when it's positive. Then, regardless of whether n squared minus n minus 1 is positive or negative, it must be less than 4n plus t, because it's the denominator. And after this, we get n squared minus 5n minus 3 less than or equal to 0. Now, by using the quadratic formula and solving n squared minus 5n minus 3 equal to 0, we can see when n squared minus 5n minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. And for integer values, this happens when n is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And from this, we can find the solutions mn equal to 1, 0, 2, 1, and 3, 2, for 3 and 5, 4 do not work. And then because we assumed at the start that m is greater than n, we can flip this round to get 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3. Now we will look at the case when 4n plus 2 is non positive. Notice that 4n plus 2 cannot actually be equal to 0, as then we will get n being not an integer. And so 4n plus 2 is indeed negative. And so now we can write n squared minus n minus 1 
less than or equal to minus 4n minus 2. Now we can rewrite this as n squared plus 3n plus 1 less than or equal to 0. Again, solving n squared plus 3n plus 1 equal to 0, we find that n squared plus 3n plus 1 is negative when n is equal to minus 1 or n is equal to minus 2. Now, looking at both of these values for n, we find that only n equal to minus 1 gives us a solution 0 minus 1, and we can flip this to get minus 1, 0. We have now looked at all the cases, and we can rewrite them here. We get mn r m minus n for n not equal to 0, minus 1, minus 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 from the m equal to n, and 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, minus 1, and minus 1, 0 from the main case. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a comment in the comments down below, and see you next time.